it's not outside the uh, tolerance of the, the, the concept of this approach. Gilda. When investigators study the plane's reconstructed flight path, they discover something more alarming than the plane's horizontal misdirection. As it circled the mountain, the plane inexplicably entered a dangerously steep and rapid descent. Perhaps two and a half times uh, the normal rate of descent. That's lethal at that altitude. Without the steep descent, they would have cleared the mountain. If the uh, vertical uh, trajectory had been correct, they would have no problem at all. Finding the cause of that sudden descent is now key to understanding why 87 people died in one of the most advanced passenger planes on Earth. Authorized for final approach, 05. The descent was initiated at 1800 hours, 19 minutes and 38 seconds. That Delta Alpha. is the point of no return. By studying Flight 148's trajectory, investigators determined that the rapid descent began 60 seconds before the crash. There is no indication on tape that the descent was deliberate. How it happened, and why the crew didn't notice, is a mystery. It should be a no-brainer. Keep your track of the altitude. The cockpit altimeter gives pilots a constant readout of their altitude. Altimeter is a very precise instrument. They become very reliable. They're accurate to within five or ten feet. Ignoring it would be a major error in flying protocol. Laps towards two. The recording reveals just one single remark from the crew about their descent. We have to watch our descent. <clears throat> it occurred 16 seconds before the crash. The captain had just extended the speed brakes. The aircraft was accelerating abnormally the captain started to realize there was something wrong with the descent rate. But the first officer changed the subject. The approach axis. We're hitting the axis a half point off. There. It was 60. Check it out. He refocused the captain's attention on the lateral situation rather than the vertical situation, which was the main problem, of course. And they both failed to recognize the situation. I think they were planning they were going to break out of the clouds so they would stay, be able to see the runway and they wouldn't need to do the full instrument approach. It was 60. Check it but out. the plane never left the clouds. There's an old adage in aviation. Rocks have been known to hide out in those clouds. It now seems clear that the crew was not monitoring their altitude closely enough. But a bigger mystery remains. We can only guess why. What caused that deadly descent? After months of work, investigators may finally have the answer. All the available flight data from the damaged quick access recorder has been recovered. We were very anxious to, to be able to read as much as we could. The data confirms that just before the crash, the plane was speeding towards the ground at an extremely high rate, 3,300 feet per minute. It also confirms that the angle of descent was dangerously steep, much greater than the 3.3 degrees selected by the captain. Three decimal three degrees. That's quite a difference. Investigators now wonder, did the autopilot malfunction? Did it somehow fail to obey the captain's safe descent angle and send the plane into a deadly nosedive? But what state was it in before the accident? Unfortunately, the flight control unit which houses the autopilot is too badly damaged to provide any definitive answers. We could never demonstrate that this FCU on this aircraft during this flight uh, function properly or not. But then, when he returns to studying the flight data, Parias discovers something that may finally reveal the cause of the crash. 
he notices a similarity between two key numbers. The plane's vertical speed, 3300 feet per minute, and the intended flight path angle, 3.3 degrees. Coincidence. Parias uses a flight simulator to test a new theory. Can you show me a descent of 3300 feet per minute? He believes that the similarity is no mere coincidence. On the autopilot, there are two descent modes, flight path angle and vertical speed. But they are both displayed on the same window. So 3300 is abbreviated to 33. Now, show me a flight angle of minus 3.3 degrees. The problem on this aircraft was that the two values were visible on the same window and controlled by the same knob. Three decimal three degrees. Minus 3.3 degrees. Parias strongly suspects that the confusing display tripped up Captain Heke. So it wouldn't be hard to make that mistake, would it? The, the confusion is quite easy between the two modes if you don't uh, do it carefully. This. If the captain failed to push the mode selector knob, then entering 33 would not have initiated a safe 3.3 degree angle of descent. Instead, it would have put the plane into a deadly rate of descent of 3,300 feet per minute. Two months after the crash, another air inter plane enters a dangerously steep descent for the same reason. Uh, the crew only discovered the problem when they broke out of the clouds. Those pilots also confused the plane's flight path angle with its vertical speed. They were lucky enough to have a much higher cloud base so they could correct the problem. Further research reveals an industry-wide problem with the A320. Many people confuse these modes, especially during training, and many of them fell in the trap even after the training. Eager to test his new theory, Jean Parias programs a simulator with all the known data from Flight 148. Okay. He then inputs the same rate of descent he believes the air inter pilots selected. If Parias is correct, the simulation will end with the plane hitting the mountain. But it doesn't. We're missing something. Strangely, this didn't lead to a crash every approach would overfly this obstacle by a significant margin. Have we factored in the wind? We started to, to work on other alternate hypotheses. Let's try again, but initiate the turn sooner. But nothing was really um, credible. No matter how hard he tries, Parias cannot simulate the crash. Unable to explain why, he turns to the plane's manufacturer for help. Thanks for bringing this to my After attention. After much research, an Airbus designer comes to Paris with an explanation about a little-known element of the autopilot's design. In emergency situations where the A320 needs to change direction quickly, the autopilot is programmed to reverse the plane's direction at twice the normal rate. The reaction of the autopilot would be much faster and these cases were typically when you were descending and uh, asking the autopilot to climb or climbing and asking the autopilot to descend. We immediately went back to the data at the, the very second at which the descent was commanded by the crew. Gear down. Parias discovers a tragic coincidence. Sadly, we found that at this very second, there was a turbulence. There was an ascent. It's very slight, but there it is. The momentary turbulence caused the plane to climb slightly. And this led to a positive 600 feet per minute 
vertical speed for maybe half a second. It was during that same half second that the crew commanded the plane to descend. It was 60, check it out. Then. The autopilot read this as an emergency requiring a blazingly fast descent. That 